Do you need a permanent vacation? Well, maybe you should try the most visited city of 2019. And no, it's not LA, New York, or even Las Vegas. I'm talking about Orlando, Florida, aka the theme park capital of the world. It's right here on a map, and as you can see, it's pretty close to the middle of Florida, in one about an hour from either coast, and relatively safe from hurricanes. Which is precisely why Walt Disney picked it for his enormous Disney World park. Well, technically Disney World's in Bay Lake and Lake Buena Vista, but it's basically Orlando. Anyways, other amusement parks soon followed, including Universal Studios and SeaWorld. But people don't just vacation here. I mean, who do you think keeps all the parks up and running? Around 286,000 residents live in the Orlando city limits, and while that might not sound like much, there's actually 2.6 million people living in the entire metropolitan area. Of course, things haven't always been this way. In fact, Orlando was barely a dot on the map from its founding in 1875 up until the 1970s when Disney World first opened its gates. But since then, it's become one of the fastest growing regions in the country, with the population increasing by around 2.5% each year. And it isn't hard to see why. The median home price is still just $258,000. It's mostly warm and sunny with no winter weather to get you down. The people are nice. There's beautiful scenery with tons of wildlife and things to do. And you get to feel like a pro at everything, since most people here are tourists. But is this place really anything more than just the tourist destination? Find out if the city beautiful is right for you in my top 10 reasons not to move to Orlando, Florida. Number 10. It's hot and humid. Don't get me wrong, the weather's great here. Until summer hits and it's so humid you can't tell the difference between the swamp, your sweat, and the air. From late April to early October, it almost always hits 90 degrees Fahrenheit, but it really feels more like 120 since there's over 90% humidity. If you're not used to it, you might question whether you're being boiled alive, and I don't blame you because you'll be soaked in sweat from head to toe as soon as you step outdoors. Orlando's honestly one of the stickiest, most humid cities I've ever set foot in. And unlike the other Florida cities, you can't even take a dip in the ocean to cool off unless you want to drive an hour first. The only real escape is to just give up and stay indoors. Number nine bugs. While humans might not like extremely hot and humid weather, do you know who does? Bugs. Sure, they do a pretty good job of keeping them out of the theme parks, but if you live closer to the suburbs or neighborhoods near nature, there will be a lot of mosquitoes that are nearly impossible to avoid even with bug spray. And don't even think of going anywhere without it. In terms of other nasty critters, no matter how clean you keep your home, cockroaches and spiders will find a way inside. And I know I said Orlando doesn't technically have seasons, but there's one season all Floridians despise. Love bug season. Which occurs during April and May, and then again around late August and September when thousands upon thousands of love bugs just pile up everywhere on your car, especially your windshield. And while technically not a bug, another part of the wildlife you'll have to worry about here are the alligators. Just assume every body of water is gonna have them, even your swimming pool. Number eight tourists. Bugs aren't the only nasty critters you'll have to worry about in Orlando. Okay, obviously I'm joking, but apart from insects, alligators, and maybe seniors, nobody loves Orlando as much as tourists. Like I mentioned earlier, Orlando is the most visited city in the United States with over 75 million visitors in 2019. To put that in perspective, even if each of those tourists only visited for three days a year, there'd still be over 600,000 extra people in the city every day. And while the theme parks are built to handle tons of people, the city itself isn't. This leads to tons of traffic, long lines, and a much more expensive cost of living since most of the restaurants and shopping prices are catered to the visitors with bigger paychecks rather than the locals. And a lot of the tourists also seem to just not be self-aware. Since they're on vacation, they think rules in real life don't apply to them, so a lot of them just complain all the time, mess up retail stores, push you without apologizing, and drive 30 miles under the speed limit. Now the good news is as long as you stay on the eastern and northern sides of town, including the downtown areas, you'll hardly even know there's any tourists here. Until you have to get on I-4. Number 7. 
toll roads. Speaking of I-4, it's pretty much the only non-toll highway in Orlando. I mean, hey, they don't call it the toll booth capital of the world for nothing. I have never seen a city with even half as many tolls as Orlando. There's literally a new toll booth every two to three miles. Sure, Florida doesn't have a state income tax, but that's honestly deceiving because the hefty tolls make up for it. A simple drive across town can end up costing you 10 bucks. And if you don't have a sun pass or exact change, it can cost you even more. The worst part about this, though, is that the tolls aren't even optional because there aren't really any alternative routes. Well, unless you want to take the city streets where the lights are often purposely timed to make travel inefficient and end up taking you two to three times longer than the expressways would have. But is it really worth it at that point? Number six traffic. If you don't want to pay those toll roads, there always is the alternative of taking the aforementioned Interstate 4 and just sitting in traffic for a couple hours instead. Now, to be fair, even the toll roads do get a little congested during the rush hours, but it's nowhere near as bad as the free-for-all mayhem on I-4. Commuters in Orlando spend an average of 57 hours a year stuck in traffic. Needless to say, it's a pretty big issue here, and all those extra tourists which make this city the rental car capital of the world certainly don't help. And things are showing no signs of slowing down either. Or, uh, speeding up, I guess? Because more and more people keep moving here. Of course, the city is trying to keep up with all the growth, and many areas are going through a complete overhaul right now. But this also means a ton of construction, which only makes the traffic even worse. So, basically, in addition to being the rental car and toll booth capital of the world, Orlando's also the orange cone capital of America. Sure, the $2.3 billion I-4 Ultimate project is supposed to help congestion once it's finished, but it keeps getting delayed, and until then, things are only moving slower. And we all know as soon as that project's finished, another 10 will start up. Number five, awful drivers. It's not just the traffic and toll roads that you have to worry about while driving here, because Orlando drivers are terrible. Between the tourists from all over the world, locals, and college kids, hopping in a car here is basically a death wish. There's distracted drivers, people going 90 in a 60, people going 20 in a 60, people dangerously swerving multiple lanes just to get to the next red light one car length ahead of everyone else, and then people who just straight up do not know how to drive. But most of the drivers here can be separated into two categories. Tourists who are unfamiliar with the area and drive slow, and then locals who have a lot of road rage from dealing with the tourists. It really isn't surprising that Interstate 4 is the deadliest freeway in the country, with an insanely high 1.25 deaths per mile over the past four years. With facts like that, maybe you'd rather just walk. But that actually won't keep you any safer, because Orlando also has the most pedestrians hit by cars of any city. It's a disaster. And speaking of disasters... Number four, natural disasters. While Walt Disney did pick Orlando due to the reduced risk of hurricanes, there's usually still a decently bad one every year or two. Sure, it's 50 miles inland, so hurricanes here aren't nearly as damaging as, say, Miami, but they can still cause floods, power outages, and do significant damage. And the worst part is that most of the houses here don't have any basements since Orlando's basically a swamp. So there are serious issues when flooding occurs. And boy, oh boy, is flooding an issue. While there are 233 sunny days a year here, Orlando still gets 52 inches of rain. Just like with the rest of the state, it could be sunny one minute and pouring the next. Florida weather is just weird, man. And while they're not common, Orlando still does get hit by the occasional tornado or wildfire. Number three there's no beach. Well, at least if you're living in a hurricane zone in Florida, there are beautiful beaches to swim in, right? Wrong. There are ponds, though, but there also might be an alligator in them. Or 20. And why would you move to Florida if you're just gonna swim in a lake or river? The state is quite literally surrounded by the ocean. So if you're envisioning those warm ocean waters and white sandy beaches, you should move to any Florida city besides Orlando, which is about an hour drive from the closest beach. And besides the lack of beaches, the scenery around Orlando is pretty boring in general. Now don't get me wrong, there are beautiful parts of Florida, but Orlando's mostly just surrounded by marshes and sparse forested areas. There are aren't really even any hills. In fact, the highest points are landfills. Number two 
you need a car. If you do want to get to the beach from Orlando, you're gonna need a car. Actually, you're gonna need a car to get just about anywhere. And you'll drive a lot on those toll roads through construction in traffic that's made even worse by all the tourists and horrible drivers. Things are very spread out here, so expect almost everything to be at least 20 minutes apart and 40 minutes if you want to avoid those tolls. Sure, the city of Orlando itself is only 113 square miles, and there are some walkable areas near downtown and around the university, but the entire metro area sprawls out to nearly 3,500 square miles. If you live and work in one of the few urbanized neighborhoods, you might be able to do without a car, but you'd be stranded there. And we already talked about how dangerous it is to walk here. Now, to be fair, the city is trying to improve and expand the new sun rail and bus systems, but currently, the city's public transportation is awful. Number one low wages. Although Orlando's unemployment rate is under 3%, the jobs just don't pay very well. The median household income is just $41,900 a year, which is way below the US average of over $53,000. This is because there's a ton of low paying entry level jobs available at all the tourist attractions, but high income jobs are a lot harder to find. And sure, the cost of living is low compared to the rest of the country, but Orlando's actually pretty expensive for Florida, especially for not even being on the coast. I mean, the median rent for a one-bedroom apartment is $1,200 a month. Orlando's actually the second most expensive metro area in the entire state. While this might still seem manageable, let's not forget to factor in those tourist prices for food and shopping. And do I really need to remind you of the tolls again? Oh, and if you live in Orlando, you're probably going to want to visit the theme parks too. And they aren't cheap. It all really adds up. What can I say? It's just hard to not spend money here. Now be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment what city we should cover next. Orlando's honestly a great place to live. There's beautiful weather, some of the best theme parks and family entertainment in the world, and the downtown and college areas are actually pretty hip and cool. I always love visiting the Sunshine State, and despite not being on the coast, Orlando's one of my favorite cities there.